afternoon, everyone. We have now confirmed that my mic is not working. <laughs> oh, this is Anuja's. So while we try and get a replacement mic, uh, welcome to the session. Um, what we'll, so very quickly to set context, I think all the panelists have been introduced, so we'll jump right into it. Um, Hello, sure, sure. Technology has uh, played a huge role in terms of how we live our lives today, right? Uh, especially with you know, uh, mobiles playing such a critical, sort of becoming a critical part of our lives, how we eat, how we shop, how we travel, it's, you know, it, it's, it's encompassed pretty much every aspect of our life. Now, while this development is happening, consumers today are also expecting a great deal of personalization, right? So I want to see content, food, clothes, travel options that are of relevance to me and that are, you know, in my budget and that I want, right? So there is a great deal, that there's a huge role that data plays in this entire journey. Uh, and today what we want to talk about with this very, very interesting and diverse panel is how uh, marketers are actually looking at data and, you know, are able to create relevance for consumers uh, through all their activities. And what is the role that AI actually plays in developing uh, a bridge between, you know, the brand and its consumer? So uh, very quickly with that, Anuja, let's uh, sort of start with you, right? So consumers spend four and a half, five hours on their phone, right? And about half of that or more is spent watching. Sorry about that, folks. So, uh, sorry, so uh, to recap, consumers spend about four and a half, five hours on their devices, Correct. and more than half of that time is spent watching content on different OTT platforms, right? So while that's a golden opportunity, um, ensuring that you are able to drive discovery for the right content for the right user is a big task. Correct. How are you sort of, you know, uh, undertaking that journey? So, uh, yeah, I think, perfect uh, industry to start with. I think uh, everyone here is definitely an OTT consumer. And uh, like you said, we are in the job, you know, business of giving joy to our consumers. And that means we have an extremely, extremely demanding consumer. My consumer uh, today expects that I know he or she very, very well. And when they demand personalization, it's not just about curating the right content, but it's also about the way the app looks, the notifications that they should receive, the new content recommendations that they should get, the way the app should, in, you know, sort of uh, speak to them through email, through the app itself, outside the app. So it's, it's an extremely, extremely demanding uh, consumer. And uh, for that, the kind of data that is needed is extremely, extremely, um, how do I say, evolving every day. And personalization for the industry, OTTs, if done right, leads to better engagement. And a better engagement will lead to a more um, um, loyal consumer. In, you're just moving up the funnel from loyalty to advocacy eventually. And that brand love eventually will translate to, you know, them picking one app over the other. Like you said, out of the four or five hours that they spend and the two they spend on content, only 90 seconds are spent in looking at a particular OTT. If I don't find what I like, I just switch to something else. So it's a hyper competitive world. And when you are building the algo to personalize, I think people have gone about it different ways. When it comes to us, we are a regional app. We are a niche app. We have uh, legacy Bollywood content and Gujarati content. And therefore, what we have done is to, uh, on, uh, given the scale that we have, we have actually used Amazon and Amazon Personalize to start building that algo for personalization on Shimarumi. And it has helped us sort of improve uh, engagement and retention rates. And in the sector that we are, which is OTTs, actually the cost of getting new consumers is becoming increasingly higher, which is probably true of a lot of other sectors too. And hence, actually, retention and personalization becomes the business strategy, not a cool additional thing to do. The idea is that this will get me better retention, better eyeballs, better engagement, and therefore better business metrics. 
Thanks, Anuja. That was uh, very helpful. Uh, quick follow-up uh, for you. So you spoke a lot about how data personalization and how AI enabling that entire bit right. is critical from a business strategy lens, right? Uh, are you experimenting at all with AI as far as uh, consumer engagement or marketing or innovation is concerned? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, AI comes into the picture. Uh, so I think AI has sort of uh, helped us do things faster, fail faster, and correct ourselves faster. So there are more copies that crea get created and tried when it comes to marketing, uh, be it static copies, video copies, uh, realsy versions of creatives. So a lot of that gets used in marketing. Then, of course, there's data that sits on uh, Meta and Google platforms and how we use those to target our consumers, right? And retarget our consumers. So I think AI in creating uh, our uh, creatives, so right from top of the funnel, all the way to direct, uh, you know, sort of selecting the right consumer and targeting them right, all through the funnel, we've started using AI. Thank you. Uh, so we will come to you next. So L'Oreal brand campaigns are exceptionally impactful, right? There is a very clear sort of value proposition that gets established. But if you look at you know what consumers are asking for today, they've become incredibly specific about what they're searching for. And you know, I was chatting with a client yesterday, and he spoke about how consumers are actually looking for specific ingredients in beauty products, right? So, two-part question for you: um, How are you you know leveraging data or and or AI to understand consumer preferences, and does uh, AI contribute to innovation at L'Oreal at all? Thanks for the question. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for praising our campaigns because yeah, there is a lot of hard work which goes behind that. Uh, so I'll take take it as a compliment. Uh, but I'll, I'll probably take a step back and uh, try to address this from the point of view of a consumer. When I'm saying consumer, like all of us. And all of us as human beings. And the one thing which is very intrinsic to our behavior is that everybody has got a different choice, preferences, right from the things we eat uh, things we wear, things we, the way we want to look, and that is what the inherent human need is all about, that personalization or uh, an individual's preferences. And as we come back to the entire uh, marketing domain, as marketer, it is also our job to probably give those experiences to consumers, our end users, in a slightly differentiated way. And that is where I think uh, probably AI and data plays a role. Uh, if we go back some five, six years back, or maybe a little far, that is when probably as an organization we started acknowledging uh, uh, very, very closely about the importance of data, and at the same point of time, how we can probably give those differentiated experiences to the consumer. So right from every touch point, whether it is uh, a D2C website, whether it is any of our communication, whether it is any of our search results, we use data to give that differentiated experience. So, so everything starts with that data. The data is the fuel which we kind of use and probably AI is the engine if I have to put in there because the more the uh, more signals, the better signals we can capture, we leverage and utilize that right from creating probably the best in class product to the best in class communication which you kind of appreciated at the start of this conversation. And uh, when it comes to experiences, that is where we are also leveraging AI. When I'm saying experiences, these are all tech-led experiences, augmented reality experiences. So you can go to the website, uh, look at a virtual try-on, can select the best shade of lipstick, or, uh, uh, or you can select the best shade for your hair color. All these are kind of experiences which we have tried to put in, and data and AI has played a key role, because these are very, very personal to a beauty consumer. And before taking that final call on the shade or the color, if technology can probably provide some kind of assistance, that is where we are trying to build a better experience for the consumer. So it's been an ongoing journey for us, whether it is in terms of product development, whether it is in terms of giving those consumer experiences. Um, so yeah. So what Sujay is not calling out uh, very modestly is that L'Oreal has won multiple awards for the kind of innovative consumer engagement that they do on the back of AR and other technological uh, uh, technologies that they use. But you raise a really interesting point, right? And uh, AI is 
for the last few months, AI has become a buzzword, right? But the reality is that AI has existed for years, right? For example, uh, at glance, we leverage AI to understand consumer content preferences, and that's how we are surfacing content to consumers. The AI is the backbone of that. So, and and you said something similar, right? That you have been from you know from discovery to search to actual sort of you know trying the product virtually. AI has played a critical role. Technology has played a critical role. So, is there any difference in you know how you are looking at that entire journey today uh, versus how you were looking at it five years ago? Is there any incremental sort of shift towards leveraging AI? Uh, absolutely. I, I think uh, learning has been a constant path for us. And the great part is that with the new technologies, uh, that learning curve has kind of become more steep for us. So as marketer also, we need to learn about it day in and day out and try to adapt. Because not just we are learning, consumers are also learning. So when they are learning, they are very mindful of their choices. So right from their content consumption on OTT platform, if that has changed, that kind of changes our go-to market or our comm strategy. If consumers are searching it differently, then that also kind of gives us a lot of signal. And just before the panel we were kind of discussing is that how we are kind of looking at those search trends to figure out whether a consumer is searching for an end benefit or a problem solution or an ingredient. Basis that we are probably kind of changing our comms. This is that even basic things like a search copy and all is getting changed. Uh, we are leveraging things like dynamic creative optimization so that if you are searching certain things, if you are from a search certain geography or certain kind of signals which you have shown as a consumer, there is a certain amount of content which can be shown to you. So it is like consumer is there, there has to be a proper communication, there has to be a proper content and in a right context if I have to put it like that. I'm the lady who kills the mics today. Uh, thank you for that, Sujay. That was, that, that's, that's very interesting uh, to hear. Priyanka, our next sort of question is for you. Um, you work f for an automotive uh, manufacturer, right? And, and the consumer sort of journey in terms of uh, from discovery to actual you know, engagement or consideration or actually building intent is far more intensive and nuanced. Right, so uh, how are you sort of leveraging AI to be able to engage with consumers at different touch points? Thanks, Devika. Uh, so guys, I work for Bajaj Auto. So while the name Bajaj Auto is a, is a single brand, I work for about five brands, which are fairly exciting ones, right from your uh, Triumph, which is uh, the new bike that has been launched to KTM to the electric two-wheeler vehicle, which is Chetak. So we have, uh, and the Bajaj Auto, which is about 80% market share, more than 80% market share and seen in every city. So we have different consumer journeys when it comes to every single brand. Uh, time may not permit for me to actually talk about it. So what I will give, uh, tell you guys is how, uh, what is the master uh, strategy that we use across. So there is hunting and then there is farming. So in hunting, basically, we uh, utilize different strategies to bring the consumer in. And then there is farming, where uh, we utilize different strategies to sell the product. And then there is a third stage, which is very critical for automobile, because the uh, ownership uh, timeline for an automobile is very high. So I'm going to break them into parts. Uh, in the first phase, while I had digital marketing, uh, there is a lot of online and offline work that we do via digital because uh, uh, bike, a, bike as a product is something where in the end a person has to touch and feel before he buys. Uh, I may not say that same for two-wheelers, but uh, uh, two-wheeler electrics because people are still buying it out of Amazon and there's an Amazon sale happening in two days and you can go and buy it there. But uh, for everything else, people do walk into the showroom. So what we do to start off with is where should the showroom be? So we are doing predictive modeling at that stage itself, where we've taken about over 100 parameters to decide where should be the next showroom so that I have the right amount of uh, audiences who are walking in. Now, this is a culmination of all the searches that happen online. What is the competition landscape? And what is the potential of that market? So this is point number one, where we are utilizing AI. And now we are able to utilize it 
uh, even more. So this used to happen traditionally, but with AI coming in, uh, I think the uh, cycle has reduced in terms of timeline and the amount of data that can be crunched. Maybe earlier we were using five or six parameters, today we can use over 100 parameters. That is how AI has brought in the first part of it. Second part, which my friends have already spoken, is how do I identify the consumer? So you have your Meta and Google, which have their AI engine running for the last 20 years. Okay, and they are just getting better with time. And we are riding on their race. Uh, uh, with Bajaj Auto, since we, have, uh, we are a legacy brand and we have a lot of consumer insights, we have uh, a much sharper data to go in as custom audiences or as lookalike audiences on Meta platform. So uh, that is the second part of AI that we use in. The third part of AI is once I have got the person inside uh, as a lead into my uh, lead management system, we utilize AI to then capture signals of everything that he is doing in the online space and also in the offline space. I'll come to how we do it in the offline space. But in the online space, what is he searching for? How has he interacted with my social media? What is he doing on my website? Okay. A small example, if he is uh, on my Triumph website and he's looking at certain, uh, he's using the configurator and he's configured his bike in a certain way. This information is passed on to my showroom executive where he's going to visit. So that when the person actually visits the showroom, the executive has a sharper understanding of what the customer actually looks for. So the selling cycle becomes easier and uh, more contextual and, and in loosely used word, personalized to what the person has come to buy in. So this is one of the examples. Um, after, after that, uh, the other signals that we pass on before the person actually goes onto the showroom is to our call center. We have our call center interacting uh, a lot with all these customers because we have lakhs and lakhs of people inquiring. I cannot have all of them going to the showroom. So at the call center, we are making call center intelligent uh, by sending all these signals and this is possible because of AI uh, as, we, uh, as we utilize over here. Uh, at the call center, there's another AI engine where we do predictive modeling for the call center executives to know whom should they call first. Because there is an array of people who have inquired, uh, there is, I cannot tell you, it's a proprietary uh, uh, um, algorithm that we utilize to basically classify uh, as hot, warm, cold. All, our, uh, all leads are called, but there is a strategy to call. And, and we've seen through our funnels that there is huge amount of conversion that happens if you follow that funnel. So that part of it. Now, once the sale happens, uh, we use predictive modeling to understand uh, and delight the customer that your next service is due. Because we make huge amount of money when it comes to the servicing spare parts. So uh, there is data crunching that happens to, uh, to basically tell you that which is the next service due for the next person. So uh, that is where, again, we utilize data. So I think I can keep going on and on uh, the way we have actually utilized, but I'm going to pause here. Uh, if you want to know anything more, I'm, I'm around uh, till evening. You all can you know, deep dive into every section of it. That's me. No, it just says Hello. Sorry, I picked up the wrong mic. That is uh, an exceptionally detailed response, right? And it's, it's really interesting to sort of hear what you're talking about because you have covered the what, the why, the where, and the how. And I mean, AI is so deeply entrenched, not just in terms of, you know, identifying relevant audiences and then sort of, uh, you know, how are you engaging with them, but starting from the basics of the business, right? Like, where is our showroom being set up? to how are we speaking to the right audience. And then once we're able to identify a lead, how are we engaging with him to optimize conversion? That's really interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. Quick follow-up for you. Are you leveraging AI at all as far as content creation or uh, you know, engagement is concerned? Uh, absolutely. So uh, we run an extensive, uh, uh, what do you call it? Sentiment analysis. Yeah, sorry, I was just looking for that. So uh, uh, we monitor sentiments. So we recently launched uh, NS400Z, which is the latest bike uh, on the road. Um, I'll just give you, I'll take this as an example. So we are continuously monitoring uh, every day what are the sentiments that are coming across. And we are creating content either with content creators to answer those queries. 
so we are utilizing it on a daily basis to uh, cater what goes out because today the audience doesn't want a brand advertising when it comes to at least uh, two wheeler because everybody knows that you know there is a bajaj pulsar pulsar as a brand is there everybody knows it and i don't think i need to build equity there but i have to answer the question because like uh, my friend mentioned consumers are very intelligent and they research so now they have technical questions so we answer that that's how we create content thank you that was a very very exhaustive uh, answer thank you for that sai ram if we can come to you next very uh, we are sort of moving to the other side of the table right because you are in a position where you are dealing with uh, tens and hundreds of clients right and that sort of puts you in a position where you are actually evaluating goals across different industries uh, nuanced for specific clients uh, you have to deliver on specific business objectives for each of those clients and there is a certain role that media plays in that right so how are you uh, from an agency lens looking at data one uh, from a media perspective and two from uh, you know how does that actually dial back into um, any business led initiatives that clients need to sort of adopt see first and foremost i think uh, uh, i don't really need to talk much on why personalization is important because I, i i i believe the room is converted the question is not why personalization the question more is how should i do personalization or what are the elements i need to be cognizant of before i get into that journey for us this entire intersection of personalization and artificial intelligence is a very very important element uh, for us to help our clients and to to help them drive business outcomes so i'll structure it in three different pillars the first is essentially what we call creating experiences creating better consumer experiences second is what uh, uh, is like the bread and butter for the industry that i represent which is making better media plans which is the entire planning as a mechanism and the third uh, with the advent of uh, ai becoming much more superior than compared to what it was 6 years 7 years ago the third pillar is essentially how do you use ai for better optimization so first i will talk about experiences i think most of the people have covered it in some form and i think uh, uh, the audience uh, also is fairly knowledgeable uh, they would have seen various works whether it is like uh, shahrukh khan in cadbury i am not 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 just another cadbury ad uh, or similarly uh, when ranveer singh for the launch of colors he came and said you can go customize and he will call you by your name inviting you for the launch of the first episode uh, l'oreal again a, a great example of uh, they created an experience we worked closely with them and created an experience where uh, uh, the consumer can come and uh, give some details about them saying what is their skin type and some other details and then uh, recommendation is done basis their personalized requirement their personalized problems solution space kind of thing similarly so many other brands i mean people might be thinking is personalization relevant for a mass tea brand like tata tea but very much relevant where you know we had access to some consumers and then uh, uh, we managed to create a very customized and personalized messaging in the context of lori so basically three things coming together right the relevant audiences the relevant content and in the relevant context all coming together and relevancy is very critical because consumer is bombarded with so many ads so the experiences section is where uh, i think today uh, because we are also i also represent uh, a global network uh, which is like working with different big partners and hence has access to so much data that we are able to create a beautiful experience by bringing together ai and human intelligence together right uh, end of date has to be uh, between both it's not a either or kind of thing so today we have a technology whereby uh, the generative ai creates a creative and as a let's say it's an automobile brand and you go and tell that i want uh, this is my objective and then the uh, generative ai creates a creative you also go and give it feedback saying that you know what uh, i want to understand if it is if it's a christmas setting then what are the changes you do can you like change the color of the car can you make the background into a snowy kind of background which is more relevant to christmas and imagine that translating into a diwali kind of context so the possibilities are immense right from an experience creating perspective basis some of the uh, proprietary tools we have and also also basis some of the things which are there in the open internet i'd like to spend some time on the second piece which is like the hard working plan uh, i mean the planner in me suddenly comes alive 
because uh, that's what that's what when I joined uh, the organization where I work in, it was told deliver a good plan. This is not something that many people will see, but this adds this adds business results, right? So today, basis the data partnerships that we have done, we are able to get some of these audiences into a planning tool. Like just to give you a news case, let's say for example there is a uh, retail client who wants to drive a certain kind of footfall, right? Uh, you know that this retail client is available in so and so pin code. So basis which you are able to identify the relevant audiences for them and then deploy different kinds of touch points whether it is like a digital OH or a programmatic or a display or a video and so on and so forth, right? And all of this you already know that this is the kind of audience. And uh, to build more value into this you already know that this is the kind of buying audience because we have models where we are able to identify consumers who are buying a similar ticket size value. And basis the propensity modeling which is working in the back end, you are able to also say that within these kind of audiences, these zip codes have a higher chances to purchase. And all this sort of make this uh, proprietary planning tool which we call growth planner an extremely utility led and a growth led kind of uh, planning tool uh, that is available. And coming then to the third use case, right? You do all of this, but what good is it if you can't like, uh, like really optimize and scale it and make it large? Because it's no good if you reach to only a few hundreds, but you want to reach thousands and millions, which is within the defined uh, audience that you define for. So uh, we have a very uh, interesting uh, AI, uh, which is works on bid optimizing. And that works on a very simple logic of, there is a manual line item, and uh, the AI sort of clones it and creates an intelligent line item. And then it also has the capability to sort of look at various vectors like, I'll give you a, uh, a very interesting example like, all of us know that there are certain platforms which are more higher in CPM compared to some others. Uh, and we know basis the research that there are some effective channels and I'm not saying efficiency, there are some effective channels and you can use that as a filter for this optimization to go. Optimization does not necessarily mean you have to reduce the cost per whatever is the buying unit. It, and because we knew from the researches that we have done, we were able to hard code in that and hence make this optimization far more robust. So like the way I mentioned, the way we look at it is we look at it at three things. How can we make it for creating better ex consumer experiences? How can we make it, uh, how can we make the plans better so that we reach to the relevant audiences in the relevant context? And how can we optimize all this to drive uh, business outcomes? That's the way we see this entire journey. So for the second and the third point that you meant, uh, that you mentioned that, uh, you know, how can we make plans better and how can we optimize? AI is basically playing the role of an enabler, right? Which is, if I get that right. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. So just going through all of this data much faster, being able to optimize faster and, you know, change and course correct or yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, I think the, the, the great thing is uh, uh, AI is, helping us visualize dimensions which we were not able to. Like imagine if uh, uh, there is a programmatic planner, he has to go and make changes in the campaign setup on a daily basis. At max what he might be able to do 18 changes, 19 changes, AI can easily do a 10x changes. Base is the goal that you have defined, right? And with knowing some, some of the things which are already sitting in history that you don't need to make so many changes, but you need to make the changes which are relevant keeping in mind what is the outcome. So I think there is a beautiful times that we live in where the good uh, juxtaposition of, you know, AI and human intelligence coming together. And frankly, uh, I know that there is a bit of a Skynet is coming kind of fear which is there in a certain set of people, but uh, it's people who can work with systems like this and make it better that, that uh, will sort of leapfrog into the next level of how things move. Thank you, sir. And I think it's really interesting that you brought up the point about generative AI as well and how that's sort of leading into uh, building consumer experiences that are innovative and creative and you gave really nice examples. Folks, our time is up, but we will just take two more minutes and ask uh, Rina one quick question. You know, again, you come from a very, very different context, right? And you are making adhesives today uh, for industries ranging from shoes to, uh, you know, airplanes, right? Um, what is the role data and uh, AI, uh, you know, that, that plays in this journey? How are you looking 
at B2B marketing and you know if you can talk a little bit about that. Sure Devika, thanks for that question. So uh, I represent Henkel and I'm part of the global digital transformation team. And like Devika mentioned, we have several businesses. Uh, Henkel is a $22.5 billion business and the uh, adhesives contribute to almost 50% of this business. And like she mentioned, within adhesives also, there are adhesives that cater to automotives, adhesives that cater to packaging, then adhesives that cater to consumer and lifestyle. So when you have such a broad and diverse audience that you have to look after, right? Me and my team uh, try and find out ways in which how we can support these different strategic business units within the organization with the right digital demand generation strategy as well as how can we engage consumers across the journey that they have in their uh, entire purchase cycle. So these are the two key avenues where we utilize a lot of data related strategies, try and find out which AI tools work best for us. Just to name a few, I've tried working with Facebook Advantage Plus for the creative content aspects because every industry within itself, uh, if you take, say for example, an automotive industry, within that, uh, a design engineer, uh, the way you speak to him will be very different uh, as to how you speak to a maintenance engineer or how you speak to a plant manager or a production engineer. So within a specific industry also, you have different audiences and for any B2B uh, industry, if you see, uh, there are several researchers that say that there are at least six decision makers. So it's not at all easy to convince uh, somebody like, you know, it's not about selling a soap and shampoo is what we say to our agencies. It's really difficult. Uh, it's really difficult to speak to these audiences and convince them. And that's where we have to understand these six key stakeholders, identify their roles in decision making, communicate different messaging to them. And that's where we really deep dive into consumer research, uh, account-based marketing research. And since I work with global teams, uh, I, there are several cases where AI has helped us make 600 calls to the number of leads that are coming in. So like three AI bots can make 600 calls per day. So that's the kind of ease at which we can operate due to uh, the integration of data, creativity, and technology. So this is the magic that we do at Henkel. So yeah, that's Thank it. you for sharing that, Rina. That, that's so interesting. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we must finish because we are way over time. Thank you so much. Thank you.